Okay, welcome back to Aggregate Supply, Aggregate Demand. And in this case, we're going to take this model, draw it in this particular way. Now, depending on your professor, they're going to draw it different ways. They might draw the aggregate supply line as a straight up and down line and then put an aggregate supply and an aggregate demand. We're going to do it kind of like the 1970s way. The next time I'll do it that other way. For now, we're going to talk about Here's an initial condition. Now look what's happening. You're at an equilibrium point where you're near full employment. So where these two cross is kind of the starting point of your analysis. If the economy were in a recession or below full employment, you would draw the aggregate demand line down here, an intersection here, and you'd end up with real GDP very low, a low part of the business cycle. We're going to start ours with, quote, near full employment like this. And now we're going to change something. Since we talked about aggregate demand last time, let's talk about aggregate supply. Let's say the price of oil increases dramatically. That's a resource to most things. Energy costs have gone up. The costs of production have gone up. This aggregate supply line is no longer viable. There's some new condition. The price of oil has increased. And in this case, when resource prices go up, it becomes more costly to produce stuff and we're going to shift the aggregate supply line to the left like this. So we get this new one over here. What does that mean to our equilibrium point? Let's change color so it's a little bit easier to see. The equilibrium point was here before. Now it's way back here, isn't it? What's happened? Output has gone down to here. And what's happened to the price level? The price level has gone up from there to there. We get some inflation, that means. You can see the price level going up. So that's inflation. The price level goes up. And what else do we get? Output going down. So you have inflation with a recession. We'll say that's $10 trillion if full employment is $14 trillion real GDP. Again, if this is complicated for you guys, what's happening is there's a new aggregate supply line. This supply line shifting to the left. Prices have gone up. Some parts of the economy, people are raising their prices. And because costs have become... Uh, higher, their their output's gone down to 10. We've got a, this what's called a stagflation effect. This is called cost push inflation. The cost has gone up, inflation's gone up, and uh, output's gone down. So what could you do in this case? Well, if you're a Keynesian policy setter, you might try to shift the aggregate demand curve to the right. Inflation occurs, well, that's too bad, but you've got full employment, etc. But notice what we've done. We've shifted the aggregate supply line. What could else happen? Well, if technology improves, in other words, productivity goes up, this affects the aggregate supply line as well. If productivity goes up, something's going to happen to the aggregate supply line. What happens if productivity goes up is the aggregate supply line shifts back to the right like this. Productivity is going up. It could even go like that. And what's going to happen to the equilibrium point. It keeps going in this direction. So with an increase in productivity, the aggregate supply line shifts to the right. I mean, yeah. And with an increase in resource prices, it shifts to the le left. If resource prices decrease, the aggregate supply line shifts to the right. So what, what am I trying to get at? Well, last time we talked about the aggregate demand and it's shifting right and left. This time we were talking about the aggregate supply and it's shifting right and left. Equilibrium's changing. It's going from here to here or here to here. This number is changing. What's important is this is a macroeconomic model. It's mapping a business cycle in some ways, like that. It's telling us where we are in this production possibilities model as well. If we have unemployment, we're inside the production possibilities model like this. If we have unemployment, we're at the bottom of the business cycle down here somewhere. So this 10 is representing here and here. And so we're trying to figure out, well, but this model tells us something about price level and output both. And these things shifting due to various things. So we get this equilibrium shifting, recession, here's that gap, or shifting to the right, recovery, or going up like this. So all these macroeconomic models are kind of talking about the same thing, but giving us different information and telling us about different concepts in terms of the macroeconomy. It gets complicated. Um, so we've talked about the aggregate demand line shifting. We've talked about the aggregate supply line shifting. We're going to do it again next time with a vertical aggregate supply line and an aggregate demand short run and aggregate supply short run because, like I said before, professors do this different ways. Uh, good luck to you is all I've got to say. Okay, um, see you in a minute.